there is this site online, it's on the internet, and people post physics questions there, and then other people answer those questions. Uh, I'm not a fan of that site, but I thought I would just take a couple of those problems that people post uh, and just solve them and just see what happens. You're always looking for problems to solve. And so one of the things, like if, if people post it, um, then and a lot of people are interested in it, I'd like to show a solution and not to get the answer to help you understand physics. And that's my job, right? That's my goal is to help you understand physics. So let's look at this particular question. Um, I'll read the question. Let me read the question. A block of mass M rests on a block of mass M1 equals 5 kilograms, which is on the tabletop C figure below. That figure. A light string passes over the frictionless peg. I don't know what it says. That's its pulley. It connects two blocks. The coefficient of connect friction, mu k, at both surfaces is 0.33. I already wrote down this stuff. And a force of 67 newtons pulls to the left. Pulls the block to the left and the lower block to the right. Well, the force doesn't pull to the right. That This tension does. Uh, the blocks are moving at a constant speed. What's the, the mass of the top block? I called it M2. So this is really just a, a, a force problem, right? A free body di diagram problem. So let's just get right to it. Let's just draw the force a force diagram for mass 2 and a mass 1. And I, don't, I haven't done this problem before, so I don't really know what's going to happen. So let's draw. Uh, this is mass 2. I'll put M2 up here in the corner. So what forces are acting on mass 2? Well, there is long range and contact forces. So for long range forces, it'd be anything that's not touching that block. In this case, it's only the interaction between that block and the Earth. We call that the gravitational force. So I'm going to draw that as a vector straight down, M2 times G, the gravitational field, where G is the vector 0, negative 9.80 newtons per kilogram. So that's X, Y, Z components. I always write it like that. Uh, now I can think about what's touching, what's touching the block. Well, there is an, uh, the block M1 is pushing up on it, right? So I'm going to call that a normal force. We call it normal because it's perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to have that right here. I'm going to call it N1 because it's from the block 1 pushing up. Next, I'm going to have uh, this force right here. I'll just call it F. F pull, but it's this is called F. And then I have also uh, the tension right here, pulling this way. Okay, now I'm thinking right here. I'm trying to decide. Let's see. So this block sliding this way. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to call that T. And you notice I drew that shorter than this force. Uh, my diagram is a little crooked, and I apologize. Uh, because there's another force. This block is contacting M2, and so there's a normal force, but there's another contact force, and that's the friction force, which is parallel between these two. So if this is sliding this way, the coefficient, the, the kinetic friction force is always in the opposite direction of the motion of the object. So that means that the friction force will be this way. I'm going to add it on right there. F, F, friction. And now, one of the important things that you can see what I'm trying to do is that since this is at a constant velocity, that means the net force has to be zero and the acceleration has to be zero. Okay, so let's call this the x direction and this the y direction. And I'm going to say f net x equals zero, f net y equals zero. So what are the net forces in the x direction? I have uh, f, which I know, and then I have minus t minus the friction force, uh, and that's going to be equal to zero. And then in the y direction, I have n1 minus m2g. Notice these are scalar equations. Uh, once I start finding the components of the forces, I write them as scalars. So this is a gravitational vector, but when I write this as a y component, it's in the negative y direction. Okay, so I know f. I don't know the friction force. Now, one of the things I do know is the model for friction. This says the magnitude of a friction force is equal to mu k times n. It's the normal force times the coefficient of friction. So in this case, that would be this n1. So I'm going to go ahead and write this as f minus t minus mu k n1 equals 0. And then down here, I can solve this for n1. So from this equation, I haven't even looked at block m1 yet. I get f minus t minus mu k, 
and then n is equal to m2g, so I get m2g equals zero. So I'm going to put a box around that. Now let's draw the force diagram for m1. Uh, and this one's more complicated, so this is m1. So again, I have the gravitational force down. I'll put a dot. m1g. And then I have the ground pushing up. I'm just going to call that n. And then I have this surface pushing down on it, right? So this surface pushes down on that. Um, I'll call that, it has, it's the same force as this. It's just the other direction. If I have forces in pairs, then if M1 pushes on M2, M2 pushes on M1. So I'm actually going to call it N2, but the same, no, I'm going to call it N1. I guess I should call this N1, 2. How about that? And I'll call this N2. No, this is just N. Then I'm going to have down, I'll put it right here, N2, 1, which is the same magnitude as N1, 2. Okay, now I have the tension pulling this way. Tensions can, strings can only pull in the direction of the string. Um, and now I have two friction forces, right? Because there's a friction force interacting with the floor and a friction force fr acting with that one. So let's, this top force up here, I actually already know what it is. It's this force right here. This M, mu k m2g is exerted on this surface. So it has to also be exerted on that surface in the opposite direction. So this force pushes that way. Um, so it has to push back this way on the other force. So I'm going to just write that as um, this way. And I'll call that F, F, 2, which is kind of weird. And then finally, I have uh, an interaction between this and that surface. So this, if this is sliding that way, wait, let's see. So this is sliding that way. Yeah, so this would also be in the same direction. And that's going to be F, F, 1, I'll call it friction force one. Okay, so this is a mess. This is a mess. Now, this friction force is due to that normal force. This friction force is due to that normal force. And I know both of those values. I already know this one, right? Because I used it above. So let's say, um, let's do the wide first. F net Y is going to be equal to N minus M1G minus N21 equals zero. And that's going to be equal to N minus M1G. And then I know the magnitude of this because I found it up here. It's M2G. So it's going to be minus M2G. And that makes sense, right? This says this force has to support both the masses, which we knew. And if you took that shortcut, I wouldn't recommend that, but I could see a lot of people doing that. So now I get N equals M1 plus M2 g. Now let's look at the x direction. So f net x. Uh, I have, again, the forces have to add up to zero because it's moving at a constant speed. And if this is moving at a constant speed, that has to move at a constant speed. Uh, the other thing I didn't mention, if this is a massless string, the tension, the magnitude of the tension pulling on this side has to be the same as that side. Okay, so I have uh, f friction 2 which I knew, right, is this. So it's going to be mu k m g m 2 g uh, plus friction force 1 minus tension equals 0. Okay, I'm running out of room, but I think I don't want to start a new page because I'm almost done. Now I can put in f f 1 is going to be mu k times n, but n is m1 plus m2 g. So I get mu k m2g plus mu k m1 plus m2g. That's that one. Minus t equals zero. So let's solve. I am going to use a new piece of paper. There's no reason just jamming it into a new piece of paper for no reason. Okay, so let's solve this for t. So if I do that, I get T equals, I'm going to add T to both sides. Uh, I could factor out some stuff. Yeah, let's do that. Mu K G times 
m1 plus m2 plus m2. And you can only do that because these two coefficients of friction are the same. So it's going to be equal to mu k times g times 2m2 plus m1. Okay, so now I can take that tension and plug it into this equation. So I have f minus t minus mu k m2g equals zero, and I want to solve for m2. So let's go ahead and put this value in for t, and I get f minus mu k g 2m2 plus m1, that's t, minus mu k m2 g equals zero. And I want to solve for m2, right? So you can see I actually can combine all these terms together. I get f minus mu k g 2m2 minus m2 plus m1 equals zero. Uh, and so this is just going to be m2. Okay. Uh, so now I can solve this for, let's just move that to the other side. I get f equals mu k times g times m2 plus m1 equals zero. And then I'm going to divide both sides by mu k. I get m2 plus m1 equals f over mu k g. And then I can add m, subtract m1 to both sides. I get m2 equals f over mu k g minus m1. Now I can put all my numbers in because I know these values. So f is uh, m2. F is 67 over 0 0.33. I'm not going to put the units in. 9.8 minus mass 1 is 5. It's kind of a weird problem. I mean, I don't really like it, to tell you the truth. 67 divided by parentheses 0.33 times 9.8, close parentheses, minus 5. And I get 15.7 kilograms. I think that's right. There you go. Online problem.